I did the numbers, I came up with a very particular uh, outcome of stuff that I kind of wanted that either I haven't decided yet if I'm going to keep it to myself or if I'm going to give it out to you and let you in on it. So this is a special bonus part of it. So as we have all of this right here, right, I want to tell you that in these first three rounds, there's only been three out of 11 that have won a championship drafting a quarterback and a tight end, okay? So, uh, got the numbers everywhere. Uh, we'll, we go up here, 19, Sam J, Kelsey, in 13, Jenny, remember her? With Cam Newton, uh, and in 12, Sam J with Newton again. So, Kelsey in the second, Cam in the third, uh, Newton in the second again. So, of all the people that have won, these are the only time, only ones that have won with a quarterback and a tight end drafted in the first three rounds. Every other champion has not had that. Okay? If we're going back to eight years, uh, all the other losers, and if you look, again, 1.1.3, 1 1.6.6, 1 1 1.7, 1.1. Meaning the average is that one quarterback, five quarterbacks, get taken in the first three rounds. Two tight ends get taken in the first two round, three rounds. And again, only three. Mind you, this isn't like I drafted Kelsey and a quarterback. Nope, this is this literally alone. I drafted Travis Kelsey in the second. I drafted Cam Newton in the third. I drafted Cam Newton. No others. So you can't double up on it. It's only got to be single. But it's just important information to know that, you know, do you go and grab those players, which are quality players early, but what's the cost of losing that? The studies show that there is a big correlation to getting these guys early versus winning a championship belt. The final part of all the numbers that we ever have to talk about is hometown homers. That's right, picking Packers. This is your this is our team, right? We have 12 individuals that are overall Packer fans. So obviously we're going to kind of lean towards that uh, team. So if you look by year 2010, we have 3, 11, 5, 12, 8, 13, 14, only 3, 15, 6. 2016 was our uh, was the most ever. 10 Packers were drafted out of 180 players. Think about that. 10 out of 180 players. That means everybody just about had one Packer on their team. Uh, 17 was 6, 18, 5, and 19 and 20 back to 6. And our projections uh, look to be about this year. We're looking like you got Rodgers, Adams, Jones, Dylan. We're, we're going to say an MVS gets picked up. We're going to say that uh, Tanyan is going to get picked up. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. We think six. Six is the number. But if we're going to go for some wild cards, some extra meh, you know, let's see what kind of happens. Uh, we do think there is a chance for a Cobb. Rodgers, this is the Amari Rodgers, the Packers defense, uh, a Lazard, or even a possibility of a function. So, I mean, you're looking, you know, these are the wild cards, but these are the six that you think for sure somehow are going to factor in to the drafts. So, uh, going back and looking at everybody's draft, uh, what we have seen is that in 2012, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 20, so just about half uh, 
there have been teams that have drafted three Packers in one draft. That's right. Three Packers in one draft. Kyle, Sam, J, Eric, Travis, Kyle, Kyle. Are we noticing a, are we noticing a trend here? Right? Ka, ka, ka. Now, look at some of this stuff, right? In 2020, there was three drafted, six drafted overall, 50% went to Kyle. In 2018, three, five, right? So again, 60%. In 17, again, three, six, 50% of all Packers drafted. In 16, 16's the odd year, right? Eh, three drafted, 10 overall drafted, 30%. Okay, in 15, again, three, six, 50%. 12, again, the other odd year, three of eight, you know, I can do the math in my head, but it's like 12% for one, so what, 36, roughly? You know, take the math. So, um, as you can see, correlations between some of these players drafted throughout. Um, so, the next steps that we're going to go through, we're going to break down who's drafted Packers. But this is just showing you the homicidity of it all, of where we're looking at. Let's start off with the uh, bottom feeders. Um, these are the people that pick the least amount of Packers. So, we'll start off. Adam and Meredith picked zero uh, going through. JB, uh, JB is very superstitious in the fact that won't draft Packers. Did draft one in 2014 in the 14th round, getting Mason Crosby. Now, uh, Dana has picked one in round two of 2015 with Rodgers. But according to our uh, current one, right, she's looking to get in round one. Pick five, Aaron Jones. So she's looking to get another another Packer there. Uh, the next three all have three. Uh, Bob, Kara, Sam B. Uh, some notable ones, right? So Bob picked the defense in the 15th round. Uh, in, in 2000, got Graham. Uh, one of the biggest things, I want to look at right here. He got Devontae Adams in 2016 in the 15th round. I know it's a little hard to see, but literally in the 15th round, he got Devontae Adams. Um, after it was a year where J.B. called him Devontae uh, Adams. So uh, take note there. Uh, Kara, again, nothing really big. The biggest one in 2017, round two, pick two, Nelson. Sure, that angered Eric because Eric always looks at Nelson. Um, and then Sam B's got three, you know, 11. The biggest year was 2019. First round, Adams. Second round, Jones. That for sure made Eric quite mad as it took away from his draft board uh, from that. But if you look from there, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven players account for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven players, right? Seven, four, eleven. That just goes to show you that how top heavy this is going to look. We get into the uh, eighth and ninth uh, players here. Uh, Sam J with five, Katie with eight. Uh, just looking, 13, picked Rodgers. This is one of those moments where three Packers were picked in a game. Uh, 15 was the year. In round 12, 13, and 14, we had Starks, Jones, and defense. So, you know, you're just kind of out in the back end, kind of picking. And then in uh, 16, round two, you're picking Lacey. Uh, Katie, with eight, starting to be a little homerific. Uh, in 2010, with the uh, first pick, you got Aaron Rodgers. That is an understandable kind of moment because you are really, it's your first draft, you're picking the player you know the best. It's Aaron Rodgers, right? So you're, you, it makes sense. In 2010, you go with Jarrell Driver, 
you double up those points. You know, that that's kind of the norm there. Uh, 2011, Jennings, after coming off that Super Bowl. Uh, 2012, you're getting the defense in the 10th round. You know, uh, 16, Richard Rodgers in the 15th. Again, just at that point, you're just looking for names that you kind of know, and that could is easily won. Again, 17, round 15, you're picking the defense. So, again, later on. And then at 19, round four, picking Aaron Rodgers again. Here we are. You're looking for value. Round four, Aaron Rodgers coming off those bad years. So this is, you know, that start of that LaFleur era. So can't blame it. These two kind of fit the mold of, you know, situational. But uh, some of the stuff that you got to realize, remember, seven had 11. Now two have 13. But as we're about to see in our next three, which we haven't seen, I'm going to give you the numbers to kind of look at. 10, 12, 15. So as you can see, these guys in their lifetime have picked more than 7 and 11 and 2 and 13. Who are those three? I think you can understand the math, but let's get ready to look at them.